What's up, everybody? Rosie the Rascal 15 here, and I'm actually going to be uh, re reviewing, yes, re reviewing the Mortal Kombat live action films. Uh, the, just the first two the Mortal Kombat 1995 film and its sequel, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, which came out in 1997. For those who don't know, that was the year I was born. I was born in 1997, so I am a 23 year old Mortal Kombat fan. Yay! Can't you tell by the shirt, that poster, and this old ass, oh, my hand's covering it. This old ass DVD copy of uh, Mortal Kombat that I bought at a uh, Best Buy back in 2001, and I'm surprised I even still have this. Anyways, um, I'm gonna be re-reviewing them. I already did a video of me talking about these films. I'm doing this again because honestly, I think I could have did it a little bit better. Um, so let's get on with the first movie, and uh, I'll give you my thoughts and what I think about it and how I rank it. So, Mortal Kombat, you know, the 1995 film, for those who don't know, this came out during a time when video games were being turned into the... When video games were being adapted into films, live action films, for the first time in Hollywood. And so far, it was not doing well. We uh, had the first video game turn into a film, Super Mario Brothers. Yes, the first, or one of the first live action uh, video games, uh, or excuse me, movies to be based off a video game was the Super Mario Brothers film. It didn't do well, and uh, it was not a good film. Then they made another video game uh, movie, which was, uh, I believe it was Double Dragon. That sucked too. And then they did Street Fighter the movie. That sucked too, even though that's a guilty pleasure of mine. Basically, Hollywood had three strikes, and the fact is, they were like saying, okay, we're not making any more movies based off of video game properties because they're terrible. They have been critically panned, not making money back, and then comes along a film like Mortal Kombat being pitched to Hollywood where it's like, hey, make another fighting game tournament movie. And it's like, we already made Street Fighter, and it did bad. But here's the thing, though. Mortal Kombat, uh, the 1995 film, this is by no means a great film. Okay, I'm not gonna go on, I'm not gonna go out and say that this is a perfect film and it doesn't have any flaws. It does. But it sure has its fans. And I'm one of them. I actually do like the first film. Just the first one. We'll get into the sequel in a bit. For a film that was pretty much coming out during a time when video games uh, being turned into films were shit. And they were notoriously cringy and god-awful. And revisiting them, you're just like, this is embarrassing. This is just cringe. And it's just... The 90s, man. The 90s were not kind to video game properties being turned into films. Let me tell you something. <laughs> um, but the Mortal Kombat film, I actually like it. I thought it was actually one of the better video game movies to come out during that time. Um, I do have a couple of guilty pleasure uh, video games turned into films, such as the Silent Hill film, the first one at least, uh, Tomb Raider um, with Angelina Jolie, and not the not the new Tomb Raider that came out. I, I I thought it was very boring. I'm talking about the Angelina Jolie one. I, that's a guilty pleasure of mine. It's absolutely stupid, but I like that film. And the Silent Hill film from 2006. I like that film. I thought it was a a pretty good adaptation, even though the story was kind of lacking compared to the video games. But anyways, we're not talking about those. Those are some of my favorite ones. Obviously, I like the Sonic film that came out this year, and the Detective Pikachu movie from last year. That those two were some of the best video games turned into films. So. Let's get that out of the way. Let's go ahead and talk about Mortal Kombat 1995. What are my thoughts? What are my uh, pros, mix aspects, and my cons? First of all, the positives. The soundtrack is phenomenal. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that theme song. Everybody's listened to that theme song. Who doesn't know that? Mortal Kombat! Like, everybody knows that song. Even if you've been to, like, a party or at a club, somebody's, some DJ... Pretty much played that song without even you. Or have you ever been to like a laser tag at like, you know, like at a pizza place? I'm sure you might have heard the song at least played once on your visit to a laser tag game. Anyways, uh, the soundtrack's great. Not just the Mortal Kombat theme, but the music itself is great. The music is really good. I love, you know, KMFDM and all those other bands that are in the, you know, the in the movie. As well as the, you know, the soundtrack that was composed for the film, you know, I, I dig the hell out of the soundtrack. Uh, positives, they pretty much got the characters for the most part correct. I say for the most part because Scorpion and Sub-Zero were kind of, uh, 
well, if you're a big fan of, you know, the video games, you know Scorpion and Sub-Zero are not slaves to Shang Tsung. They were uh, doing their own things. They had their own reasons for attempt, uh, attending the tournament. And in the film, it doesn't represent that well. It just kind of briefly says, oh, Scorpion and Sub-Zero, they're Shang Tsung's servants. And I'm like, no, they're not. They, 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 they were not. But keep in mind, this came out during the time when Mortal Kombat had only three video game adaptations and the story was not as fleshed out as it is as in the sequels because now we have Mortal Kombat 9, Mortal Kombat X, Mortal Kombat 11 and the story is beyond expanded by now. Now the story feels fully realized because back in the day Mortal Kombat story was kind of eh, like there's a couple of cool ideas for these characters but the stories weren't fully realized for the characters so I can kind of excuse it. Uh, but no, everybody from like Sonya, you know, Kano to Johnny Cage, you know, there's a reason why even the latest Mortal Kombat game has the actor that plays Shang Tsung in the film is the same actor that voices him in Mortal Kombat 11, even looks like him. This goes to show that the movie had a big impact on the video game franchise itself because there's a lot of moments in that film that you see in Mortal Kombat 11. You know, there's even references to that film from dialogue to pieces of, uh, you know, scenery from the movie, actors from the movie, lines from the movie, again, little callbacks to the movie. So clearly, you know, it has a big reputation on the video game. For better or for worse, it did affect the video games, especially Kano. Because uh, Kano um, in Mortal Kombat was actually a Chinese, uh, or I think he was Chinese, and then they changed him to Austrian. Um, Austrian, Australian, excuse me, I said Austrian. <laughs> so stupid. Austrian and Australian are two different things, Jerry. No, they turned them Australian. So uh, that was pretty cool that the Mortal Kombat movie ended up affecting the video games for the better, in my opinion. So those are the positives. Where are my mixed aspects? Okay, my mixed aspects, and this is pretty much what everybody can agree upon. Uh, the special effects and the acting. Now, the special effects in the film, there, there's some really good special effects. Like, I really dig the hell out of the Shang Tsung morphing into different characters. I think that looks cool in the film. I really genuinely love, like, all the practical effects. Like, on Goro, like, he looks cool. I love the puppet they use for him. You know, a lot of the cool, uh, you know, just the little practical effects like that. But then you have some stuff that just hasn't aged well, like the reptile and the movie just looks terrible. It looks absolutely garbage. I don't know. It just hasn't aged well. Scorpion Spear looks like a, a video game, like a PS1 uh, video game. It just looks terrible. It, it looks horrible. And some of the acting... Okay, look. I'm going to praise the hell out of the actor that plays Shang Tsung, Raiden, and uh, Johnny Cage. And everybody else is kind of mixed for me. Uh, the actress that plays Sonya, Bridget Wilson, and Robin Shu, uh, the guy who plays Liu Kang, they're okay, but they're they're not. You know, they're not gonna give an Oscar-winning performance here. They're just it, some of their lines deliveries is just it's not good. It's just really like you could have said that better. Some of the acting is really off, and some of the dialogue is not great, but. It's not the worst. It's not like, oh my god, this is some of the worst acting I've heard in my life. Like, no, I've seen worse acting in bigger budget films, trust me. You know, I, I've seen a couple of James Bond films where, you know, there's some supporting cast that are just really bad at acting. So, I've seen that. Anyways, um, yeah, and then, like, uh, another mixed thing is the action scenes. Now, I like most of the action scenes, but to be fair, I think the only problem is... Uh, sometimes the action scenes, uh, in the movie can feel a little bit like, um, a little quick cut, but, uh, you know, that's just my only, like, it's a small gripe I have, but no, the action scenes are, are done well. It's just, uh, sometimes they, they cut away too quickly, especially in the second film. We'll get to that effing film in a bit, but no, the action scenes are great, but for the most part, there's a little bit like too much close ups. I'm like, come on, zoom out. I want to see the action, but don't get me wrong, the action scenes are really entertaining, but they, I think they could have been filmed just a little bit better, but that's just my opinion. And then we get into the negatives. Uh, basically, the biggest negative is that, you know, th th this movie's not, you know, Oscar-winning, you know, writing here. I mean, the story is basically an Enter the Dragon ripoff. They talk about all these, you know, different realms and all these different, you know, you know, how the emperor and all this princess Kitana's from this world and blah 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 
Like it's all it's a bunch of setup, but nothing really delivers on it. Unless you're a fan of the video games, you know about all these worlds and these realms and these characters, but in the movie you're just watching it and you're like, What? What what do you what is this? What huh? What the hell's the who's the emperor? Who what? What's the Shokan? Well, actually, to be fair, even uh, Kano makes a joke about it. Because uh, Goro's like, I am Goro, Prince of Shokan in the, you know, the realm. I, I rule the realm of Outworld. And he's like, uh, subterranean realm of Outworld. And then Kano's like, uh, subterranean? What's that? Like, something like underground. Like, even Kano himself is like, kind of like, yeah. Pretty much Kano's like the most relatable character in the freaking film. Because there's a scene when he's at the at the banquet, and he's just eating a big turkey leg, and he's like, what I just saw out there was not fair. You know, I always believe in a fair fight. You know, one-on-one, -on -one, man to man hand-to-hand, -hand, just like my daddy taught me. What I saw out there was not fair. Like, yeah, like, Kano pretty much takes the words out of our mouths. Like, yeah, pretty much everybody's cheating in this tournament. Like, if this is a tournament about martial arts, why the hell you have guys shooting fireballs and and, you know, electricity and spears and shit. Even Johnny Cage makes fun of it on the boat. To be fair, that is kind of more of a positive. Is I think they're kind of self-aware of, like, knowing what's going on. Like, Johnny Cage is like, we have a guy freezing stuff. We have a guy shooting fire. And then we have a guy who, for all we know, is mad of electricity. He goes, what's going on? Who are, who are these guys? Like, yeah, Johnny Cage is pretty much like us. And Kano, like, Kano and Johnny Cage are pretty much us as the audience. And then Liu Kang and Sonya are pretty, like accepting of it and i'm like i know it's a film i know it's you know it's kind of a hard pill to swallow but you know what it's a fun film it's flawed but it's fun if you can get over some of the you know bad bad special effects and some of the really uh you know cheesy acting although i do feel it does make the film a lot more enjoyable yeah, this is a great film. I still think it's a great film despite its flaws. I still enjoy it. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give Mortal Kombat 1995 a 6 out of 10. I still think it's a great film. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a great film. Honestly, I want to give it a 7 out of 10. I mean, I want to give it a 7 because I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan, but honestly, it's a 6 out of 10 film. It's an average film. 6 out of 10 doesn't mean it's bad. 6 out of 10 means it's, it's an average film. Like, would I recommend buying it? Yeah, I think you should. If you're, I think it's a good film. I think give it a chance. If you don't like it, oh well, you didn't like it. But honestly, I think you will be amazed with the amount of uh, passion they put into the project. And compared to other video game films during that time, not so great. Okay, speaking of not so great. Oh, uh, yep, we got this one. We got Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Destroy all expectations. Because I had no expectations for this film. Let me tell you, this was... Uh, this one was really, this was work to sit through. Now, I have a friend, and I'm not going to say who it is, but if you're watching this, buddy, you know, you know who you are. I have a friend who genuinely likes this film. Like, he thinks it's a great film. That's fine. Hey, if you like the film, power to you, okay? I mean, there's, it has its fans. I think that's a fucking terrible film. Okay, there, I said it. Okay, I know, I know some, actually, I don't even think, I don't think people are going to throw tomahawks or boo me for that. The second film is absolutely garbage. I have nothing redeemable about that film other than the soundtrack is great. The music in that film is also yet again great. It's also by KMFDM and all of these other great bands like Psychosonic and, you know, all these different cool 90s, you know, electro-funk kind of bands during that time. And you know what? They had more money to work with. And somehow it looks cheaper. It, the special effects are absolutely terrible. And it just, it feels cheap, and it's not, a, and it wasn't made cheaply. Apparently it had like 10 more million dollars compared to part one. I think it was like a $35 million film, and then the first one was like a $25 million film. It's like, what the hell happened here? Where did the budget go? You know, some of the worst special effects I've seen in my entire life in this film. Some of the worst acting. Seriously, this movie makes you realize what the first Mortal Kombat movie could have been. The second one is really bad, like it's... The fight scenes are even done worse. It, it's just the worst film. The fight scenes are poorly done. The acting is somehow worse. The special effects are worse. The music, though, I think I actually like the music a lot more in the second film. That's like the one freaking positive that I'll say is better than the first one. I think the soundtrack is really good. But everybody else is terrible. I mean, they brought back only the actor that played Liu Kang and Katana. So I think it was... I th Liu Kang was played by Robin Shu. And Katana was played by Talisa Soto. I think that's how you say her name. 
but everybody else was recasted. Raiden was recasted. Johnny Cage was recasted. Sonya was recasted. Jax was recasted. Uh, even Shao Kahn, who had like like five seconds of dialogue in the last Mortal Kombat film at the end, got recasted. So it's like, what the hell? Everybody got recasted. I don't know. This movie, look, it's funny for the wrong reasons. It's got its fans. And look, it's enjoyable. I did watch it as a kid, so in case anyone's like, well, maybe you didn't grow up with it. Maybe you didn't watch it at a young age like I did. No, I watched it at a young age. And I remember even back when I was like six or seven years old, I remember like when we were at the Scorpion, when I was at the Scorpion and Sub-Zero fight scene with my family, when we were watching it, I was like, this movie kind of sucks. Like even when as a kid, I knew it was not a good film. It really makes me feel embarrassed to say I actually like the first Mortal Kombat film because the second one is, is god-awful. I mean, where do I begin? The story is even more convoluted. It's confusing. Shao Kahn is a joke of a villain. The Shang Tsung villain from the first one was really good. He was very good at being menacing and subtle. I mean, one of the most menacing things you'll ever hear is when Shang Tsung just looks at the camera and he's like, Your brother's soul is mine. You will be next. You know, he says it in such a really menacing hissing voice and you're like damn that that actor really nailed what it is to be a villain the Shao Kahn actor he's a joke you know he's like as long as the portal remains open your world becomes my world <laughs> I'm like shut up dude you're not even you're as menacing as a pack of crackers you no Mortal Kombat Annihilation I, I don't recommend that film uh if you want to look up some clips of it on YouTube just just look up some fight scenes or look up some of the CGI. It's it's terrible. I don't recommend buying that film. I would say save your cash. On a scale of 1 out of 10, I give Mortal Kombat Annihilation a 1 out of 10. And that's just me giving it one point because I actually do like the soundtrack. And some of the costumes were kind of cool, even though they're really cheap. That's another thing. The costumes look cheap. I, anyways, I, I'm not talking about that garbage film, that movie. I can go on and on about that film. So, yeah, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, you know, really bad. And uh, the first one, pretty good. I think the first one was actually all right. Again, Mortal Kombat 1995, a 6 out of 10. Mortal Kombat Annihilation, the sequel, a 1 out of 10. So, yeah. If you've never seen these films, I recommend watching the first one because it's actually enjoyable. If you can appreciate the fact it is, you know, it, it is, it, it's a diamond in the rough, okay? It has really, 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 really rough parts, mainly in some of the CGI, some of the acting, and the story not being the greatest in the world. But damn it, is it a fun popcorn action film. The second one is like the first movie showed up drunk. And pissed itself and everyone's just laughing at it not laughing with it like it's trying to tell jokes but he's just drunk and just rambling on that's Mortal Kombat Annihilation so yep oh and uh, actually I do want to talk about Mortal Kombat Scorpion's Revenge uh, the new uh, cartoon film that came out I really like that film I think that's pretty much the best Mortal Kombat film we've had Sadly, it's not uh, live action. It's an animated film, but it's really good. It's pretty much, it's kind of like a remake of the first Mortal Kombat film. That's a great film. It's got a lot of action. It's got a lot of gore, and it's funny. It's well made. Um, it does feel a little bit short, and it does feel a little bit rushed in a few areas, but it's still an enjoyable film. That's like a 7 out of 10 film. That's uh, a pretty good film. I like it. But anyways, I'm just here to talk about the first two films. So, yeah, Mortal Kombat 1995. It gets one thumbs up and kind of uh, a thumbs up and or thumbs in the middle. And then Mortal Kombat Annihilation gets two thumbs down. Sucks. All right. I'm done talking about these films. This is Rosa the Rascal 15. And if you got... Well, how long is the first Mortal Kombat film? Hang on. If you got a... Uh, is there like a... I'm trying to see how long this movie is. Oh, if you got 101 minutes to kill... Uh, and you want to watch something fun, watch the first Mortal Kombat. And if you want to just, you know, torture yourself for 98 minutes, uh, watch the sequel. Please don't watch the sequel. Bye, guys.